Hello everyone, I'm Emma Linguist, and today I'm going to be covering some tips I have for the North American Computational Linguistics Olympiad. For context, I've been live streaming for the past week, solving problems from past competitions, and this shorter video will cover all of my learnings from my hours of practice this week. In my studies so far, I found that the majority of problems can be categorized into three main types, phonology related, script related, and algorithms related. The core factor tying all the problems in the competition together is that they require you to accurately recognize patterns to be able to get the correct answers. Let's start with phonology-related problems. In all my practice, I've honestly seen these the least. Phonology-related problems incorporate the sounds of a particular language into the questions. For example, this problem from the 2021 NACLO competition involved switching out certain letters in English with other letters that made similar sounds. One other problem from the 2022 NACLO Invitational was about a child's pronunciation of certain English words. In fact, all three of these highlighted columns use an alphabet called the International Phonetic Alphabet, or IPA, which I can go over more in a future video. Regarding my tips for phonology-related problems, I found that my prior knowledge can help at times. I have a vague familiarity with the IPA, so I was able to decode sounds in that 2022 invitational problem considerably faster. However, I don't recommend studying the International Phonetic Alphabet solely to do better on NACLO. There just aren't enough instances of knowledge of the IPA helping a lot in solving a problem to justify doing so. My top tip in terms of these types of problems is just maintain some kind of system to stay organized. It's incredibly easy to get lost on these. Finally, if all else fails, sound it out. I believe phonology-related problems have an advantage in that you can check your answers through your logic and through sounding it out in your head. Script-related problems give you a text or phrases and ask you questions based on the phrases. A lot of the questions will involve translating standalone phrases or matching translations to each other. These problems are the ones I've encountered most in my studies, so I feel pretty confident with them. Keeping track of verb conjugations, subject verb object order, and making dictionaries of translations are just some of the things I do to stay organized. I have a full v video detailing my approach on my channel linked in the card. The final problem type I'm covering today is algorithm related problems. In these problems, you're typically given one or more algorithms and are asked to answer multiple questions based on these algorithms. As for tips, my best tip is to just follow the program step by step. It might take a little longer, but going step by step will ensure that you're getting the right answer. Don't be afraid to write things down and make mistakes. In fact, if you do make assumptions, be sure to mark somewhere that they are assumptions and circle back to them later. My second point is that algorithm related problems are much easier to study for. If you already know how an algorithm works, you'll spend much less time to, trying to figure it out from the problem description and gain those points faster. Finally, be patient. In order to simulate a computer's algorithms, you'll have to do a lot of repetitive things. But if you follow through with it, the problems can be fairly easy to solve. One more bonus general tip I have is to prioritize problems according to your strengths. If you're good and fast at algorithmic problems and or have good knowledge of the content covered, prioritize solving those first so you know you have some points to start with. Another example of pro problem prioritization would be if you knew one of the languages on the test, or you had practiced a bunch of similar problems and know exactly how to approach the problem. Solve problems you know how to solve first, and then move on to the more experimental ones. At the end of the day, my number one tip for the NACLO competition is to practice a lot. The more familiar you are with the problems, the more accurate and fast you are. Thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing.